in starting, um, I want to share uh, a little bit about where we're going as a school, but we always want to start with where we are. I'll share a few things about where we currently are. Um, one thing is that uh, it's been a blessing. Our faculty has been wonderfully stable over the last little bit. We have one new full-time teacher this year at Ben Lippin. That's Corey Swindler. Uh, Corey teaches uh, math for us. He teaches algebra too, mainly. Uh, he just got married this summer. Our full staff this year, faculty and staff, from last year to this year has been reduced by six with only one new full-time teacher. And so we have been you know, dealing with some of the economic things that, that other places have been too. I will say also our resident program, one of the interesting things is that it is not just full right now, it is over full right now. We have actually 84 beds in our resident program. We have 90 students right now. So we have some living in homestays and others, actually CIU was kind enough to take some of the seniors um, and allow them a little extra privilege. So we have three girls living on the CIU campus. We also anticipate that next year our senior class will be over 100 students for the first time in a long time, or possibly even the first time, I'm not sure. Um, our junior class will also be 100 students plus next year. Another wonderful thing, college scholarships. Last year we had, I believe it was 74 four graduates, in the mid-70s and graduates last year, $4.5 million in renewable scholarships uh, they were awarded. That's about $60,000 per graduate, and that's wonderful. Uh, those numbers are way up from what they were before. Also, the AP program continues to expand. Um, a phenomenal number of college credits are up for grabs with students when they take AP exams, and also, uh, just recently, our kind of, it's not really dual enrollment, it's a quasi dual enrollment. CIU offers classes in the afternoon after school is done for Ben Lippin students. We have about 40 students in that right now, and they offer those for the most part free of charge, which is fantastic for them also, because then, of course, they want Ben Lippin students to come to CIU too, um, to see some of their professors in action. So we're gonna have about 120 credits just this semester offered to Ben Lippin students through that, those classes in the afternoon. In time, I, I have no specific announcement on this, but I will tell you that in time, and not too long of time, while a lot of your kids are still here at Ben Lippin, we will offer a program that allows very precocious students to finish their entire associate's degree, two years worth of college, before they graduate from high school. It's not done yet, but we've been working on it for about a year and a half to two years now. And we're at the place where, where we're hammering out a lot of things that have to be hammered out. We don't have a firm deadline on that yet, but that is the direction we're heading. And that's one of the nice things about the synergy that we can have right here on a college campus with CIU. I want to mention also the, um, the athletic program. Uh, development of that. It's not just about wins and losses. On the slide behind me, you'll see some things. You'll see the, the girls uh, team holding up a trophy from, a, from a, uh, a tournament that they won over the Christmas break. Um, but it, the football team, I think, had nine wins this year. We've never had that in the history of the school before. But it's not just about wins and losses. I had a mom come and catch me in my office yesterday and said, you know, I was out in the community, I was visiting a doctor. That doctor had been to a number of our football games and was a doctor on the sideline and said, there's something different about Ben Lippin. Love being there. He said, your kids are just different. I, I've been cautioned against doing this as well as uh, for doing it. But what I'd like to do a little bit is demystify some of the, the uh, relationship that Ben Lippin has with the parent organization here at CIU. Even some people on our board don't fully understand, or the spouses at least, have told me, I don't really understand how it all works. I'm going to take a few minutes. It's not part of the where we're going. It's really a part of where we've always been. But I want to try to, try to help explain some of that and just, again, demystify some of that. Ben Lippin is part of something bigger than Ben Lippin. And that whole corporation is called Columbia International University. There are a lot of parts of it. Columbia International has a, a seminary. It has a, an, a grad school. It has an undergraduate school. Um, there's a, a radio station here on campus, WMHK. There's actually a radio station in Charlotte, WRCM, that's part of this corporation. And Ben Lippin is part of it. Ben Lippin has always been part of this. We are 70 years old this year. And for 70 years, we have been part of the Columbia International University organization. Um, 
neither one, neither CIU nor Ben Lippin necessarily, I want to make sure this, this is said the right way, needs the other one for existence. So if CIU ceased to exist, Ben Lippin would stand on its own and would be okay. If Ben Lippin ceased to exist, CIU would stand on its own, okay. Um, neither one supports the other either. Um, sometimes people ask if, if we give to Ben Lippin, does the CIU use a piece of that or does it all go into one fund? The answer is no, absolutely not. Every penny that's donated to Ben Lippin specifically goes directly to Ben Lippin, every single penny of it. I'm asked also, too, uh, sometimes I'll be in the office and people say, I know you have principals, headmaster, Mickey Bowden's here doing something. How, does, how do you all fit together? So let me show you what, what it looks like. I've got a, an org chart here. Here's Ben Lippin School. The day-to-day -day operations of the school are directed by me as the headmaster. I answer to Mickey Bowden, who is kind of the liaison between Ben Lippin and CIU. So Mickey is a vice president at CIU. He's a vice president in charge of Christian school education. Now Mickey then answers to Keith Marion, who is a senior vice president at CIU, has, has a title longer than any of us would, would probably be able to fit on a business card. Keith is also the, board of, the chairman of our board of directors at Ben Lippin. He answers to Bill Jones, who's our president. We have a Ben Lippin board of directors who make most of the, or do most of the board of directors things for Ben Lippin. But there's also a CIU board of trustees, and that's really over the entire organization. So here comes uh, the list of what's coming. Uh, one thing I announced last year that hasn't come yet is this thing in high school called the Winterum. And the Winterum will be a three-day thing that happens after President's Day. We will take President's Day off. We will take, which is a Monday, we'll take the next day, Tuesday, off from school. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will be the winter for high school. These are real days of school. Elementary and middle school will have typical school days, but the high school is going to have a list of different things that they can do. Mr. Swindler, who is the new teacher, he and another teacher are teaming up, and they're doing a canoeing trip in the Florida Keys. Sounds fun. Uh, we've got one group going to Ecuador. We've got some students doing SAT prep. Um, we have some students doing internships. And so you can see the list up here. It is absolutely, absolutely going to be fantastic how um, the Winterum works. And so this will be our first year doing it. The idea is to learn things that, that, um, that you wouldn't necessarily learn in a classroom. The other thing in, that's coming is every year I should be announcing to you some kind of new thing with technology. Technology is just, it, it is genuinely adding depth and breadth to what we offer in education. We've been spending every other Thursday morning here at the school teaching our teachers how to not just be more efficient on the computer, but how to use it as an instructional tool. A dynamic, fantastic, integrated instructional tool to make the actual delivery of education better, not just make the teacher more efficient. And so um, in doing that, uh, we, we have uh, given laptops to or provided laptops for virtually all of our faculty. Um, and then we have created some labs. We have a high school lab now that's all uh, max, uh, middle school lab with those. And now, and next year, the, the scheduled plan is to actually be putting some IMAX into all the elementary classrooms. Uh, some of the other things that are happening, um, our library database is now online. That just happened over the Christmas break. So students can get online, they can see what's in the library, they can actually check things out that way. And um, we're just kind of catching up with, with a lot of what's happening in library sciences right now. The future of this too, and I don't have a date on this one either, but the future of this is sooner or later, our students will have something this size or smaller in their hand, and inside of it, it'll just be a piece of technology that has a million pieces of paper right built into it, and a million pieces of graph paper built into it, and an encyclopedia, and a thesaurus, and a dictionary, and the Library of Congress, literally, built into it, have their textbooks built into it, and it'll end up being cost-effective for us to do that.